you guys. I mean, you guys, by showing up today, are learning based agents. You're setting the gold standard for where our industry should be. Any little bit of knowledge that you can pick up to make you a better agent, a better person, is it's just a little little tick in the right direction for not just you guys, but the industry as a whole. And I want to start off by, by doing this. Will everybody stand up for a minute real quick? Thank you. I get, a little, get a little energy going in here. Uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's early. We're realtors. It's, we're not used to this. Hi. Right, I want you to stay, put your hand out right out front. Just point it straight in front of me. Right. I want you to turn to as far as you can and remember where that point is. Whatever you see, just remember it. Now bring it back in front of you. Close your eyes this time and do it again. And, and this time, really try. I want you to see to go as far as far as you can over. Now look where you're at right there. You know what's interesting? You just did a lot more than you thought you could. So we've had a bunch of great speakers come up and they're doing great, great big things. And I think sometimes in the very beginning, it's very hard to see what you really can do uh, versus what, what can actually happen. So our, our, our problem is, is our short term success. We think it's going to be really big and easy and we lose track of what, what we can do over a long course of time. I can tell you, everybody that spoke today so far, it made me feel good because I'm like, man, I'm doing that. I'm doing the right thing. So these guys here talking to you, they're doing the right things. All right, with that being said, let's get, y'all can stand up, sit down, hell, I don't care. <laughs> so when we look at like, when you look at growing a business and how you operate, I think there's three ways to do it. Chad is a really good marketer. You know, you can do, you can do direct mail, you can buy Zillow leads, you can spend SEO driving people to your website. You can do open houses for other agents. That's all a form of marketing. That's one way to skin the cat. The other way is, is to be a caller. Like, we've got a guy in our market that is a world-class caller. He, like, loves to get on Red X, Land Voice, whatever it is. Call expires, call for sale by owners. Geo farm areas with phone calls just to homeowners. I tell you... I, was, I, I saw him doing it. I was like, I'm going to go do that. I did it for one day. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. So the other way is a referral-based business. Now, I think that this is, if you're looking for longevity, if you're looking for a highly profitable business, because that's what we're trying to do here is create a profitable business, and if you're looking for just something a little bit more enjoyable to do, I think a referral-based business is the way to go. So how do we get started? Like, I don't know, maybe you guys are one year in the business, maybe you're five, six years in the business. I probably should have got a show of hands. But, so you have past clients that you work with, you have your sphere of influence, you have your friends, and you have your vendors. You need to create a list of, of these four categories. All right. So, your, your past clients are exactly what they are. What's amazing is, is most real estate agents, they're so transactional, they, they don't ever go get that easy deal that pops up two, three years down the road because they sold a house and they never kept up with the person. That's just a fact of life. That's just not even real estate. That's, a, that's just general. All right. Then you have your sphere. These are people that you should target, whether you know them or, or not already, that can send you business. Now, when I started doing it, I uh, had these friends that were really successful. They either owned accounting firms or they were uh, in, uh, retirement planning specialists, those sort of things. So kind of everybody kind of knows some of these people. You may not know them, know them, but you know them. You can probably give them a call and ask them to go have a cup of coffee with you. Uh, put those in that list. Then you have your friends. Like, just put them in a list. We'll get to what... These are people that would send you business if they run across somebody, right? And then vendors. You kind of want to be, and Chad, Chad's done such a great job, job of this, being a mayor of your town. Part of that is, is creating relationships 
with other business owners in the place that you do business. That way you can refer them out to other people. Guess what they do when you refer them business? You refer business back to you. All right. So you kind of got that list. All right, great, Angelo. I have a list. What do I do with it? They, you know, what's the strategy here? How do we create relationships based off of that? Because that's what this is. You ever have somebody stop by and try to sell you something? They just call you once or they swing by the office once and then you never hear from them again, but you never buy anything. Maybe they were a little bit more consistent with it. You would have bought something down the road. All right. So if you don't have these, I think you got to find your tribe. Find the people that you feel comfortable with. For me, I'm a big fishing and boating nerd. I love that. I live at the beach. There's a lot of people that sell investment property, sell beachfront condos. That is a very small portion of my business. What I realized very early on was there was plenty of people that wanted just to buy second homes. They usually had cash. It was a lot easier transaction to do. And what I found was that they were fishermen. And what else did they have in common? They usually owned hunting camps too. So like when I'm thinking of that, I want to bring value to those people. So I'm thinking of like tackle stores. Like, so we do a weekly fishing report from a local tackle store. But guess what? I started realizing that like all my people also own hunting camps. So I go develop a relationship with the number one hunting camp <laughs> land guy in the state of Alabama, really kind of the Southeast. Now we send each other referrals. All right, you got to get involved. You can't just uh, join organizations and not be involved. So this is kind of like how you're trying to build your, your sphere. Like, I want to be a member of the Mobile Big Game Fishing Club. I sit on the board. So now I can leverage that into developing relationships. So you develop that relationship. Hey, Richard, man, it's been great being on this board with you. Do you mind going out and having a cup of coffee with me one day? or lunch because that's really where the magic happens you've got to the, you've got to break bread with people that's how you get to know them that's how you become friends and at this point you're not even asking for business you're just getting to know them what i do is i make sure i go to one event a week you can be a chamber event if you're into pickleball go join the pickleball league i love the thing with i have small kids so i'm involved with all this with all their extracurricular activities. One event a week, go meet somebody, set up a lunch or a coffee with them. If you get, once you get good at it, you'll start sending them a couple of lunches and coffees. I try to do one cup break bread every day, five days a week. A lunch or a coffee. That's how you want to start off with. All right, what do you do with these people? You bring them value. So, like if you're going to be a mayor of your town and they make everything that goes through that town go through you like and if there's somebody you want to meet maybe a flooring cabinet guy you don't know him. it's not very hard just to pop in or give a phone call ask if you can go meet with them tell them what you want to do i do facebook live <coughs> videos this is just me getting into the door like a it provides great content for my social media and the people that i don't have the really deep relationships with it's more of a wide lake they're they're gaining value through that but i'm also about bringing value to my foreign cabinet guy and now i can say hey look i really want to get to know you a little bit better thank you for doing the video let's go have a cup of bite to eat one day so now once you bring a value guess what you can do you can ask for something in return and you're still not asking, hey, can I have a piece of your business? Can you send me business? I have a form. It's called my All About You form. And I don't know. We'll figure out a way to get it out to you. It's not really hard. I'll kind of run over what it is. So if we're in that beginning of relationship phase uh, with somebody and we've kind of gotten to the point where we've done some favors for them and we feel comfortable asking for this, it's basically both spouses' names contact information, phone number, email, address, birthdays, anniversaries, kids, their names, their age, and what they're into. I always say, I want a fun fact. What's your kid into? Are they into baseball or into fishing or whatever. Uh, do you have pets, cats, dogs, iguanas? <laughs> and we want to know. We want to know. We want to get into a deep relationship with you. Like, we don't, we don't know you, but we want to know you. 
What's your uh, favorite cocktail? What's your favorite restaurant? Favorite charity? Favorite dessert? All right, so we have that now. All right, here's where the magic happens. We don't do a lot of advertising spend. We call it our gifting program. And we, like, now that we know that Chad's favorite restaurant is a Lebanese restaurant in Chelsea, and Chad sends me a referral, guess what Chad gets? He gets a nice gift certificate to his favorite restaurant. Like, what if Chad was a vegan and I sent him a thing of Omaha steaks? Well, that wouldn't be a very good <laughs> That would <laughs> That wouldn't be a good touch. Like if I know they're into golf, you know what I might ask them? What balls, what kind of golf balls do you hit? I don't play golf, but like, you know, I'm like, oh, thank you. I was just curious. Everybody hits a different ball, I'll write that down. So it gives us an opportunity to do a really deep personal touch. And you've got to build this into a calendar and you check it every week. What's gonna happen the next week? So we know everybody that has a birthday coming, we do a birthday in a box. And it's cheap, and everything we do is $10 or less. We don't spend more than $10 a touch on anybody. A little Hostess cupcake, some matches, a candle, a little blower, uh, a little balloon, and an instruction manual, how to wish yourself a happy birthday. <laughs> Remove cupcake from wrapper. Oh, wow. Stick candle in cupcake. And then on the back side is how to post us in social media. So now, they're tagging us in their social media page. So now we're connecting with them and their clients. On their anniversary, it's an anniversary candle, a handwritten note. Uh, we have National Dog Day, so everybody that has a dog gets a dog treat. You go to Amazon Prime, set you up an account, load all these people <laughs> in there, their addresses, and it's really quick and easy to send them out, to send them out gifts. Right before Thanksgiving, we always send a Burp's Burp Bees gift pack out. It's like lotion, chapstick, it's starting to get cold, you know, you kind of need that stuff. But also, everybody may be going to their house, and that may end up becoming a topic of conversation. We're figuring out how for people to bring up us in a natural conversation. Right before the 4th of July, we usually do a, uh, a little spice kit for grilling. So kind of think about what you're going to do. We have a couple other touches, but it's personal touches throughout, throughout the year. On top of that, once you've created your list, uh, let's see here. All right, and once you've kind of filled out that all about you, then you can explain your strategy, especially if you're doing this with business owners and people that are kind of like you either financial planners, we're all kind of like the same, cut from the same cloth, really. So they might get into your strategy. Like what I'm trying to do, I'm not a salesperson, I'm just a connector of people, and I want to be the spoke that connects everybody. So once you get them bought in on that strategy, now they're looking for you. Hey, the reason you're on this list, the reason I'm asking for this, is I need one referral a year. I have 100 people, my 50 best past clients, my 50 sphere of influence. And look, you don't need to start off with 50. Most people, we had 50 something on ours and we just cut it back to 31. Because we we're like, should this person really be on this top 50 list? Can they go over to my friend list and just get a birthday card instead of my birthday in a box? Can they go over to my vendor list? Like maybe they work their way into it. Uh, this just keeps it kind of affordable and makes sure that you're still touching everybody but like touching the right people in the right way. Wow, that sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> Touch it, Angelo. We got it on the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, more touches equals more value. So how do we keep up, keep, keep up with all this? Like one thing that I thought Chad did, did really well, our Clarence, I hope Gussie say it, man, you have to have a schedule. You have to have a plan. Like, my whole day, at 4 o'clock the afternoon, before, it's, it's sitting on my desk. Time blocked out, color-coded, phone calls, drive time to lunch, lunch, drive time back, thank you cards, showing, appointment, boom, 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 boom. There's no, there's no wait time on my calendar. If you get wait time, guess what you do? Scroll through Facebook, 
Uh, I'm going to watch this video. Oh, this is a pretty interesting article about uh, the nuclear power plant in China that blew up five years ago. Like, it just sucks you in. If you're going to do some, if you want to play with social media, schedule it in. That's your time. I mean, look, like, I'm as, I'm as bad as anybody. Now it's scheduled in. If my assistant catches me on social media when I'm supposed to be doing something otherwise, I gotta put $20 in a jar. And then she gets it at the end of the month. So, got really expensive for about a month there. But it's, you got held accountable. Our biggest issue is, is that we don't hold ourselves accountable. And uh, so this, this, I set up my whole week, Monday, is all my sphere of influence. If you have 50 of them, this is how you break it down. There's usually four weeks in a month. 12, 13, 12, 13. It takes about an hour to call those people. Once you've got them kind of built into your system, that's not a long phone call. Hey, Chad, how you doing? Oh, great. Hey, look, man, I was just thinking about you. It's been about, I don't know, a couple months since we went out and grabbed a bite to eat. Man, can I... Uh, can I set, set us, set, set, put, us, put us together for a lunch one day next week? Perfect. Oh, next week doesn't work with me. Even better, we'll schedule it for two weeks out. If, if you get to a point where you can afford to hire somebody to help do this stuff for you, it's going to be the single biggest changer is getting some of this stuff off your plate and bring it on a system. In the beginning, you can't do that. So you got to schedule, hey, these are times that I'm going to get back with so-and-so and actually schedule an appointment. I think most people fail because they get, don't implement. It's so easy to go meet people, but then to go actually purposefully sit down with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, people, that's where, we, that's where we fail. That's where I fail many a times. All right, Tuesday is status update calls. All my listings, everybody that's got something listed with me under contract, what are we doing? You know what this is? This is my opportunity to ask for current client referrals. The problem with, the we all, everybody tells you, oh, you gotta get a referral from your current client, but then we wait right till the end of the transaction to ask for that referral. Oh, I can't think of anybody. Now you don't have a good reason to call. It's actually kind of awkward. Hey, can you uh, judge? Did you like what we did? Can, do you know anybody that would really like that? At the end, no, I don't. I'm just trying to move into my house. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, but you set it up in the beginning. Hey, this is the level of service we're going to provide you. Every Tuesday, status update calls. You may get calls before or at, you know, in between, but for the most part, wait to hear from us on Tuesdays. If we do this, then we're gonna be asking for referrals. And always there's a term, it's called reticular activator. And what it is, is if you go out and buy a brand new BMW tomorrow, and you're driving around Birmingham, you're gonna notice everybody else is driving a BMW. And I say, hey look, you're doing a real estate transaction. What you're gonna to start to notice is, everybody else is starting to think about doing a real estate transaction or maybe doing one. I need you to be look, on the lookout for those people, and I need you to get me their contact information. Now, if it's okay with you, either myself or if I have my assistant with me, because usually it's a listing presentation when we're doing it, can Lee call and ask me that? Now I'm already giving her, him her permission to call and see if there's anybody that, that uh, they can refer to us. And that way, at the end, you, can, you just ask throughout the whole thing. That's how you get that current client referral. If it doesn't feel awkward or uncomfortable, you're not doing it right. <laughs> We've got to get out of our comfort zone. It's gotta be a little awkward and uncomfortable. It's not natural to, to, for us to do that. That's what separates the cream from everybody else. All right, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday is past clients. We're calling the same way, top 50, boom, boom, boom. And then we take everybody else, the alphabetical, you got 26 letters in the alphabet and 52 weeks in the year. That's two calls a year to the people that you really don't care about. Or you don't care about. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, I should have said that, that you're, they're not, you didn't click with them, but just because you didn't click with them on a very high level doesn't mean that they shouldn't be touched on that level. So, you, you know, hey, 
Bill, just wanted to call and touch you. How's the house going? How's little Jimmy doing? I always still get the all about you, so I know what they're into. Even if I only talk to them twice a year, that they're falling into that category. Uh, so we have current clients, past clients, sphere of influence. Uh, then we're going whale hunting one day a week. And for this, this could be, like I think there's an, an enormous opportunity with builders, like not just like, not the guy that's actually building the house, but like say a DR Horton, those people that are sitting in those homes, all they can do is sell that, sell that run product. They can't go out and sell a listing the chat has listed. They're selling that product. So the strategy there is, is set up, you're gonna go by there. Hey, there's five or six communities in the little area that I like to work. I'm a big niche person. I do stuff all over Baldwin County, but 90% of my business is in Orange Beach because that's where I like to work. I don't like to drive a lot. Uh, I don't like first time home buyers. Everybody I deal with, they're usually second homes. So not to say I don't do first time home buyers, it's just not where I want to be, not my space. Uh, but you could go create those relationships with those people, bring them lunch, sit there and eat it with them, learn about their family, learn about their dreams, where they want to be. Is this like a stepping stone for them? Have they been doing this forever? You don't even talk about your business. They'll bring it up eventually. And then, then you can talk about it. Build that relationship. Jenny, how am I doing on time? 19 seconds. Oh, 19 <laughs> seconds. All right, cool, cool. All right, so I'm going to leave you with this. Our goal here is not to build a big business. It's easy to build a big business. Go buy internet leads, bring in a bunch of buyer's agents. You can have a big business. But our goal is to build a great business, a great business that is profitable, a great business that provides excellent customer service. And that way, the referrals will come from that. And I'll say this, where most people fail, we talked about it here, is implementation of what you're going to do. Man, we've had some really good speakers here today. I mean, wouldn't y'all agree? Yeah. Lots of stuff. I mean, I think I could write down 20 things that I could implement, which is always what I did. And I'd come back and I'd go, we are going to do all these things. And guess what? Then I don't do anything. What I would tell you to do from, from today is write down the, you know, if you got 20, write down 20. If you have 10, write down the 10 things that you want to implement in 2020 into your business and say, all right, number of one through whatever, what are the most important things? And you tackle those things one at a time. Or if you say, hey, these are the three things that I can implement in the first quarter. You write them down. You do what Gusty says, measurable, actionable, accountable. All right, guys, I appreciate it. I hope you all got some knowledge. And, uh,